So this study was basically conducted to understand whether positioning for an Oxford mobile bearing knee really matters in implantation. The lead investigator for this study was Dr. Tapaswi, co-author Dr. Patel. I do not have any conflicts of interest and I would like to thank my friends and colleagues who helped. So there is a lifetime risk of about 45% for developing osteoarthritis of the knee, the medial side of which is more commonly involved. UKA is an established procedure for this uh, condition and it is not a stopgap procedure. The implants used currently can be either mobile or fixed bearing and can be either placed cemented or cementless. Now that is a hanging leg position uh, which is recommended by the Oxford group for performing Oxford UKAs. This is very different from the flat table position which an arthroplasty surgeon would normally use for performing a TKA. So the null hypothesis for our study was hanging leg position for OUKA is superior in terms of implantation and kinematics. So this was a cadaveric study. We chose eight whole cadavers after ruling out any anatomic macroscopic defects and normal soft tissue envelope around the knee. Each knee in each cadaver is randomized to either being positioned and performed in either the hanging leg or the supine position. All surgeries were performed by a single trained Oxford replacement surgeon using the Oxford microplasty instrumentation. The orthomap precision knee system was used for navigation. Parameters tested including implantation placement, thickness of the bone cuts, implantation parameters on radiology, and navigation kinematic studies. The surgical technique employed was exactly as described in the textbook by John Good, uh, Goodfellow. It was a minimally invasive procedure without any releases, and bone cuts were performed using recommended saw blades. So this is an actual photograph from the study itself. The planar which has been placed with the tracker, navigation tracker, shows how we measured the coronal balance, the slope of the tibial cut, and the sagittal vertical tibial saw cut. Statistical analysis were done using the Excel uh, software and the SPSS. Two tailed pair t-tests were performed with a p-value of point, less than 0 0.05 being considered significant. Multivariate analysis, Wilcoxon signed rank test were performed to compare the two groups. And then area under curve analysis was done to again compare kinematics, which I will describe in detail in a while. So the results were assessed in these headings, which I just said. Now coming to what we obtained. Now as far as the tibia coronal cut was confirmed, it was found that there was no difference between the two groups, whether the surgery performed in the hanging leg or in the supine leg position. As far as the slope is concerned, which is again performed using the jig provided with the instrumentation system, there was no difference between the two groups. But as far as tibial rotation is concerned, which is determined by the sagittal vertical tibial saw cut. Now this is a free hand cut performed entirely based on the surgeon's judgment. We did not find a difference in terms of the p-value in the uh, student test. But we did find that there was a wide standard deviation in the knees which were operated in the standing, uh, in the supine uh, leg position. Whereas in the knees which are operated in the hanging leg position, there was very narrow standard deviation which was within 5 degrees of uh, rotations on either side. The tibia biscuit thickness which were measured using digital vernier calipers did not show any difference whether this was performed using either a uh, uh, hanging leg or the supine leg position, again because these cuts are performed using aid of the instrumentation provided with the microplasty system. Radiographic parameters, femur flexion on lateral radiographs did not reveal any differences irrespective of the position. Mediolateral and anteroposterior placement of the implants was also comparable with minor variations which was again within the acceptable limits. Now that is an externally rotated implant. This is an ex internally rotated uh, implant uh, in the tibia. Now the area under curve analysis was done to assess kinematic outcomes. This basically is paired analysis to calculate change in kinematics from the native knee to the operated knee. And the absolute difference between the matched kinematic measures for both varus valgus and internal and rotation were quantified and plotted as a delta curve. And then the cumulative differences were calculated as the delta sum. Now this is the delta curve for the varus valgus. The red curve is one for hanging leg, the blue one for the supine leg. This is the one for rotation, the red one for hanging leg and the blue one for supine leg. Now what does all this mean? It basically means this. So when the difference of post-op kinematic data is compared to how the knee was behaving 
in the native state. Smaller the differences means we have achieved a balance which is closer to the native knee. Hence, lesser is better. The hanging leg position did give us smaller bar graphs. That means they were well balanced. Now, currently there is no objective data available as to what constitutes an ideal tibial rotation and what is a well balanced OUKA. Both these are completely surgeon specific. What we did get from this study is the hanging leg position as recommended by the Oxford group does improve accuracy of the vertical sagittal tibia cut. What we also found that hanging leg position is better for replicating nat native knee kinematics of the knee as shown by the area under curve analysis. Now, these are studies from the Oxford group itself which say that about 5 degrees of malalignment on the tibia coronal alignment and about 10 degrees of femur flexion extension is acceptable as well as 3 millimeters of overhang on the medial side is acceptable for the Oxford implant. But we do know that placing the implant in too much internal rotation can cause impingement, involvement of the ex posterior fossa or external rotation can cause again posteromedial overhang or impingement. As the mobile bearing implant moves with flexion posteriorly, this can cause problems including dislocation. And this recent study by uh, a group in Turkey again showed that within 5 degrees is okay, but anything beyond 5 degrees leads to deterioration of results. Kinematic data, again mobile bearing is better in terms of restoration of kinematics. We must avoid overstuffing the medial side because it leads to strain in the MCL and that can contribute to abnormal kinematics. So why perform an Oxford knee? For bilateral surgeries, for such large patients and when your diagnosis of AMOA is in diagnosis. This is a cadaveric study which has its limitation and used in northern arthritic knees. So in conclusion, hanging leg is better, provides better rotation and better kinematics when implanted. Thank you.